Today is May the 11th, 2010, and I have a uh, Fender Blues reissue here that has a problem. I'm going to document it. Hopefully, it'll help some other people. What I've discovered about this, the uh, owner brought it to me, and it has a buzz in it sometimes at certain frequencies. So I have it hooked up here with a hundred test setup. Here's our input. Where the guitar normally goes. Here's our dummy load right here. And uh, this right here, the second connection, hooks over to the test equipment. We have, we're going to watch it on an oscilloscope. Here's the frequency we're running at. Uh, this is the voltage output across 8 ohms, and this is the distortion. We don't really care too much about that. Uh, the output is somewhat significant. And here's a uh, low distortion oscillator. And we also uh, have a second oscilloscope. I like to watch it on a bigger screen. It's hooked to a dummy load right up here, 8 ohms. And I also have a volume control right here that goes across the 8 ohms. This is a, it's about a 350 ohm resistor that I can use. And this right here is coming back to the speaker so that we can hear it. Well, what I've discovered is here's the problem. was in uh, I kept thinking that the problem was um, in these two relays I don't know why but I had a funny feeling that the contacts in these relays were buzzing because I could press on this board and tap on it and uh, make it do all kinds of things that you you saw it do in the other one but actually after being finding out that I could press on the bottom of the board rather than the top and make the problem change it actually boiled down to this wire right here broken right there I don't know if you're going to be able to see it here probably not on this camera but yeah you can too 
and see there that's what's wrong with it so I don't know if that's a common problem with these amplifiers or not but these uh, these ribbon cables that go from one to the other so there you go I'll fix it and then we'll see if it actually works see if it actually really fixed it actually it's got two broken wires this stuff must must be pretty fragile I'm thinking that this is probably uh, this one's broken too so if you have problems with this amplifier if I ever see another one or this one again I uh, thought so I'd point that one out too well this does seem to have fixed it however this one right here the one that was broken was on the end actually there was another one broken I think it was the second from the end and when I started trying to fix one the whole thing just snapped right off popped right off in my hand there was another one broken in this one not good so I've had to completely remove remove all of the wires out of the holes clean the holes out and resolder these back in this is a real weakness but it does work now seems to be it I'll uh, document the output uh, once I get its tubes back in it does seem to have a good set of tubes okay now that the amp is repaired we're, we're gonna and it's got its original tubes back in and I'll and I want to say that uh, these tubes are quite good they're uh, groove tubes which is not something I've always been fond of but these are darn nice they, they did an excellent job of matching the 6L6's they run 40. They measure 40 on a with a minimum of 25 on a TV7DU, and then these 12AX7s are outstanding. Uh, they they uh, they put some premium tubes in it. Got to give them a lot of credit for that. Uh, these this is a weakness. It's going to be a curse for this amplifier. There may be a point where uh, it has to be uh, individual wires placed between them. I did. Uh, completely redo these two. I did not have to do the other two. I could find a break in them and it does test well. And I put goop on them to give it some mechanical strength. Okay, let's measure it. All original tubes are up back in it. We're going to measure it. We're going to start out at a kilohertz. There's 996. We'll call that uh, we'll call that a thousand. There's no use in playing around with a few cycles. And uh, there's our output. Not bad. Not bad at all. Drive it up to clipping. 5% five, 5 distortion at 17 volts. Across 8 ohms. So uh, 17 volts across 8 ohms is 36 watts. So it does pretty good. I think they uh, claim it does 40 watts. And there it is too. There's the spectral analysis. This is the uh, this is the fundamental frequency. This is probably the first harmonic, which is two kilohertz, two, three, four. F the fifth harmonic is uh, very small out there. If you've ever looked at any of my other videos about uh, using a spectrum analyzer, this thing is amazing. This particular amplifier is amazing. Very low distortion. Very very low distortion. I guess that's uh, I guess that's what you want in a blues amplifier. There it is. Uh, we'll stretch it out. It looks really nice. That's at a kilohertz. I've got it at clipping. And I know that. But uh, it pretty well meets their specs. I, I I can't criticize them for that. We can crank it up some more, and we can we can square it off a, li a little bit more there, and get it up to seven and a half percent distortion at seventeen and a half volts. You can do the math. Gets the, this number squared divided by eight. That's its actual power. 
into 8 ohms, but it, uh, it does darn good. I'm just going to measure it at 1 kilohertz to, to keep it uh, short. But uh, hope this is of value to you. Hope you enjoy it. Good old, uh, this is the uh, Fender. Darn, I have, a, I have a short memory. This is the Fender's Blues Deluxe Reissue. Seems to be a nice instrument.